I've I've discovered quite a bit about myself uh, in in terms of, of weaknesses and, and strengths that I have. Uh, really pushing yourself right to that brink, uh, you know, you it it, it magnifies uh, all, all of your your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, things that I I would have never otherwise noticed uh, become just absolutely plain as day. This episode of the Smart Athlete Podcast is brought to you by Solpre, skincare for athletes. Whether you're in the gym, on the mats, on the road, or in the pool, we protect your skin so you're more comfortable in your own body. To learn more, go to solpre.com. Welcome to the Smart Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Funk. Today, my guest has a pretty cool list of credentials. He's one of only 15 people to have ever finished the Barkley Marathons. The S is important on that. Don't think it's just one marathon. Um, he's a Guinness World Record holder for the fastest marathon dressed as a video game character. We're definitely going to talk about that. Um, funny enough, he made sure to have me include the as a slow swim on record in a sub-nine-hour Ironman. Um, he's also the 2018 ITU Long Course Age Group World Champion. It's the chief analytics officer at Envelop Risk, which we're going to definitely get into some of the data analytics and data science here later. And he's a father of three. Welcome to the show, John Kelly. Thanks for having me. John, you got a lot going on. So it's, I think I think we're going to take probably our whole time trying to unpack what's going on with you. All right. <laughs> so um, kind of give me a little bit of background. How I mean, you it seems like you predominantly do ultras. You've... Uh, I think I read you have, relatively speaking, retired with triathlon. Um, you know, how do you get from triathlon to ultras, or how do you really get into ultras at all? I, I always ask that of people. Just um, most people don't look at a hundred mile race and say, "Yeah, that's something I want to do." And as you know, you know, the starting line is not going to be near as packed as even just a regular marathon. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's. I think for most people, it's it's a bit of a snowball effect, and it, it definitely was for me as far as racing these types of things. Um, you know, I I'd, I'd always wanted to see what I could do in a marathon, and mm -hmm. finishing up grad school, I just went ahead and signed up for one without having really ran or raced um, much for ten years, uh, and. Uh, I did that. It, it didn't go too well, but gradually I, I just said, yeah, I, I can go faster. And then it became, I, I can go farther. Uh, and, and then eventually I, I kind of discovered that, that people actually go have these long races on trails. You know, I spent a, a good deal of my time backpacking and doing through hiking and, and kind mm -hmm. of um, running myself on the trails and I, I never knew that this whole world existed. Uh, so that was, that was pretty exciting to, to find. And, you know, once, once I got going in it, it just, um, it's a, a great challenge and, uh, a great community. And it, even at worst, uh, on your worst race, it's a, it's a fun day out in the mountains. So, I mean, what, what's the train of thought there? Is it like, well, I did a marathon. I could go a little bit longer. And you just, is it just, is it a gradual step or is it, do you go from marathon and just say, oh, heck, we're like, we're just, let's just go the whole way? Yeah. Um, so I, I think it, different approaches work best for different people. Mm -hmm. I've kind of been a, a, always one of those just dive right in, uh, see, see how well I can do. And then I can kind of, calibrate my my goals uh from there so like i said I, I came out of grad school the longest i'd ever raced was a 10k um which was a decade earlier and i, I signed up for a marathon mm -hmm. uh, about a year after that i decided i wanted to try triathlon so i signed up for an ironman uh and i i actually started applying to uh to barclay be, before I had done an official ultra. Like I said, I'd, I'd done a lot of uh, kind of backpacking and, and mm -hmm. what people call fat ass runs, um, but put nothing in the way of, of an official, official uh, ultra. Okay. So it's just like, 
almost a natural kind of popping from one thing to another in terms of being exposed to it and then thinking, okay, let's I'll give it a try. Like not, not worrying too much about it's daunting or anything like that. Just like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, for me, it's, it's a quicker way of kind of getting to, to your potential uh, rather than just uh, taking baby steps, I can use that first, uh, what is likely to be a massive failure, uh, mm -hmm. to kind of figure out where I am. And, and from there, then I can start to adjust and kind of make, uh, realistic goals and, and expectations. Does Just come with... accepting that I'm, I'm going to fall on my face the first time. Right. I, I kind of have a similar, um, philosophy. So I, I run a couple of businesses. And so anytime I'm doing something new, whether it be new product or completely new venture. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm going to screw up. Like I just accept that it's something's going to go wrong. No matter how well you plan, like something will go wrong. And as you, as long as you plan that something's going to go wrong, it's not a surprise. And then you just adjust from there. Do you feel like that's a matter of being really, really um, analytically minded for you that that kind of mindset comes along or is it something you developed? Um, I, I think it's kind of two, two different things. Um, you know, there's, there's a risk taking side of it, but then also just, uh, the enjoyment of a, of a challenge of mm -hmm. seeing a challenge as an opportunity. And, uh, I think that having sort of an, an academic uh, or sorry, um, analytical or, or engineering, uh, type mindset, uh, those two things are, are correlated uh, a good bit. Like when you, you look at people who have had success at Barclay, uh, most of them have this kind of, uh, background and some form of, of science or, or engineering. Uh, so right. it's just this mindset that I'm, I'm going to, uh, set a goal and, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. So tell me a little bit about Barclay. Um, so for the people watching YouTube or listening, um, can you kind of give, explain what the race is and then tell me a little bit what's going on out there? Uh, so it's a, uh, race in Tennessee, uh, right near where I grew up and you have, uh, 60 hours, uh, to, to finish. It's five loops through, through the mountains, uh, mostly off trail, entirely unmarked course, um, it's, it's around 70,000 feet of climbing uh, over the course of the race now, and uh, probably around 130 miles. Uh, he, he says that, it, the, that it's 100, but, but everyone knows that that's, that's off by uh, a pretty large amount. Mm -hmm. uh, so only, only 15 people, uh, including myself, have, have finished the race, and it's, it's one of those where uh, the, the cutoff is, uh, and the difficulty of the, the race are set, uh, just to where it's, it's right at that edge of, of human, what's humanly possible. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have some curiosities about the race. Um, is the course same, the same every year or is it redesigned every year? No, he, he changes it. Um, okay. some, sometimes by a, you know, by varying amounts. Uh, I've, I've done it four times now. Uh, and in those years, there have been some years where uh, he made some changes uh, just to be sure no one perfectly knew the course. Um, but you could kind of debate whether how much harder those changes made the course. And then there right. are other years where uh, typically after someone finishes, where we he adds uh, notable uh, difficulty to, to the course. Um, the, if, if you've seen the, the documentary, uh, three people finished that year, the mm -hmm. following year, uh, two people finished. And then the, the year after that, uh, he added a, a section, uh, that, um, that, you know, most people estimate, uh, for the leaders would add about 40 minutes per loop. Uh, so, okay. uh, about three hours, uh, total. Uh, over the course of the race. I mean, so what? So what's the allure? I guess since you've done it four times, what's the allure for you of? I mean, a constantly changing course. I I think for some people we would think, 
okay, I want to know the course. I want to know kind of what I'm getting myself into as far as how difficult it's going to be, how long it actually is, since that's up for debate. Um, you know, why, why go back to a race where you have uh, not entirely known expectations of what's going to happen? I mean, that's, that's part of the challenge and, and part of the excitement. Uh, you know, the, um, you know, a, a big allure of, of sport, I think, is the, um, the sort of the, the uncertainty in it of, of not knowing the outcome. You know, that's, that's why we play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so having that out there uh, really adds uh, a, a significant amount of, of uncertainty to it, uh, even more so than you would uh, find in, in a normal ultra or any endurance type event. And for me, uh, that, that adds to the challenge um, and, and makes it sort of like a, a puzzle to solve, um, mm -hmm. which again, kind of coming from this engineering and, and analytical mindset is uh, quite fun. So clearly I would say, I mean, you're not going out there and just freewheeling it. You do some kind of preparation and you know as you complete the loops i know you can kind of stop in um i think you have support with you to kind of check in on your health and make sure you're ready to go for another lap what what kind of prep for you goes into getting ready for essentially the unknown yeah i mean uh, you're definitely uh not going to go out there and, and just wing it you, you want to prepare yourself as as best as possible and, and again it's uh, the race is set up to where it's it's just right at the edge of what is possible uh, under the assumption that you have prepared yourself properly. So if mm -hmm. you haven't prepared yourself, then, then, then there's, there's no way. Uh, you know, again, kind of referring back to the documentary, um, John Fagarossi, the, the guy that finished third that year, I, I have little doubt uh, that, that at that time he could have drawn you a, a full topographic map of a frozen pen where, where the race takes place. Uh, mm -hmm. he, had, he had studied it, it so well uh, and, and knew it so precisely by, by memory. Uh, so there's, there's a great deal of, of studying maps, studying uh, race reports uh, from both successes and, and failures in the past. Uh, and, and training yourself both physically and mentally uh, for that type of challenge. I'm kind of wondering, I, I read that um, in the last two years, there's been no nobody to complete it. Um, kind of wondering, is it? do you think it's the race director's goal to have nobody ever complete it from here on out? Or no, uh, what, what's, the, what's the motivation for holding the race for him, do you think? No, he, he definitely wants it to be uh, right at that edge, you know, around 1%, uh, okay. which, which he's, he's had so far. And so as people get uh, better at preparation, as this sort of collective knowledge of the, uh, the area, of the course, um, of the best strategies to finish uh, as gear improves, as training improves, nutrition, lighting, all of these things uh, that have really added to um, what people are able to do out there, uh, that's sort of offset by the difficulties to, to the course. So, so the goal isn't to, uh, the, the goal is to keep it at the same relative level of difficulty uh as as all of these things happen uh and so that's that's an interesting thing to me with kind of the the big uh recent discussion on on like the, the vapor flies and the other things that are mm -hmm. happening in road running that uh give this enormous performance benefit and of, of course uh going back to my triathlon background that's that's an arms race in, in terms of technology and yeah. uh, aerodynamics on the bike and, and everything else um so, so people are, are taking advantage of these things to keep uh, getting faster, whereas uh, Barkley essentially nullifies that argument by just uh, becoming a, a proportionate amount more difficult. Right. Yeah, it's, it's its own arms race in a way where he's correcting for any kind of advantage that might be 
had via preparation or equipment. Um, right, and and I guess the the other aspect of, of that is, uh, you know, he wants it to be where if if someone does finish, uh, they you, you know they've they've given everything, and, and mm -hmm. he'll he'll even say that the ones that that finish are the ones that that kind of uh, get robbed of of finding out what your limit is because mm -hmm. that's that's the goal to have it be just hard enough to where everyone can go out there uh and and find what their their true limit is i mean it sounds like more of a philosophical journey via running which i can empathize with certainly so i mean what do you what do you learn from failure since i mean if the, if the whole idea is that 99 percent of people that go out there are, are not going to I'll say succeed, depending on how you define success. Um, you know, what do you learn from failure by going out there at all? Yeah, so uh, that's that's a great question, um, and uh, I think everyone takes away uh, slightly different lessons from that. Uh, for myself, I've. I've discovered quite a bit about myself uh, in, in terms of, of weaknesses and, and strengths that I have. Uh, really pushing yourself right to that brink, uh, you know, you, it, it, it magnifies uh, all, all of your, your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, things that I, I would have never otherwise noticed uh, become just absolutely plain as day. And then when I when I take those back during life, um, some problem that matters a, a bit more than running circles uh, through the woods, um, I'm, I'm able to to apply those lessons. Um, so it's it's not just about learning lessons of of how to succeed better at the race next time. That's definitely been the case. Um, mm -hmm. You know, both of my first two failures at the race, I learned things that helped me succeed. Uh, the third time, uh, but there's uh, definitely more that you take away from it uh, than than what you would learn by just going out and, and achieving success on the first go.